We get a lot of updates today on the Montreal Canadiens, including some potential trades we might see, the status of Carey Price, the status of interim head coach Marty St. Louis, and more. So we're going to discuss the future of all those situations. Plus, we have word that Joel Quenville wants back in the NHL. Will Commissioner Gary Bettman allow him to be once again employed by an NHL franchise? Plus, we have a signing in Vegas and all kinds of injury updates now that the regular season is over. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to discuss today. Uh, first up, let's talk about the signing with the Vegas Golden Knights. Signing one of their top prospects, and that's a former first-round pick from the 2020 NHL draft, Brendan Brisson. Now, Brendan, of course, was playing for the University of Michigan with several other high-profile NHL prospects. They came up just a little bit short at the Frozen Four, winning a national championship, but a lot of those players have since turned pro. Brisson is the latest to do so. He had a pretty solid year in Michigan, putting up 42 points in 38 games, and he also had been playing in the American Hockey League. He was on an AHL-only deal, though, where he played seven games for the Silver Knights in uh, Henderson and put up eight points. So certainly a solid start to his pro career. A solid uh, college hockey season as well, and Brisson appears ready to make the next step. Of course, he's appeared for Team USA multiple times as well. A uh, real solid prospect. Of course, he's the son of one of the top agents in hockey, Pat Brisson. So, uh, obviously, Vegas should be excited about him. I don't know what his odds are making the team at a training camp next year, but I would think, given their cap situation, where they're going to need a few players that are on entry-level deals, if it's not this year, I would ex expect him to be a full-timer by next year for sure. He does project to be a pretty solid uh, player so far. So we'll see where his development continues into next season. And we also got some word today on several injuries. I know we got a lot out of the Ottawa Senators organization. Of course, season has come to an end. We found out that goaltender Matt Murray, uh, the reason he was not able to come back in this last stretch of time, he was out on injured reserve was dealing with post-concussion syndrome. So certainly that's uh, not good. It explains why uh, he's been out for such an extended time. Uh, certainly puts a, a little bit of his future in question, although he seems optimistic that he will be healthy in the not-too-distant future. Uh, he was hoping to go over to the World Championships to play for Team Canada, and that is not going to happen because he is not well enough and better enough here as of yet. So that's just too much risk involved. So, uh, so in case of Murray, though, I mean, there's a lot of talk that the Sens will, you know, probably try to trade or buy him out. I know in the media availability today, they made it sound like they were, you know, going to have him back in the fall, but I don't think that's a given. And I think uh, the status of what happens with him will a lot largely depend on his health. But he didn't play a lot this year. When he did, he was inconsistent. So it, a trade would be tough. A buyout might be tricky if he's not healthy. So. That's a big question mark on what the future holds for him in Ottawa. Uh, top prospect Jake Sanderson, who come out of college hockey, signed his entry-level deal, but of course at the time had a hand injury. Uh, ended up re-injuring the hand, which is why he never got into an NHL game. They were optimistic that he would play in either the final game or final two games of the season, but uh, he's back in a cast again after re-injuring his hand. He's going to be out for six weeks, so um, that's certainly not what they were hoping for, but he will be good to go come the, the fall for uh, training camp. Hopefully he will be able to go to their development camp uh, in the summertime here as well. It will depend on the timing. We found out that Connor Brown was playing with a broken wrist for the last 10 games. Uh, so obviously he had an injury that was dealing with there. Actually, I think there's multiple injuries that he's been dealing with. That certainly is one of them for sure. And we also found out from uh, GM Pierre Dorian that Chris Tierney and uh, Victor Mete will not be back next season. Victor Mete is going to be an RFA and he's not going to be qualified. So he'll become a UFA and uh, pending UFA, Chris Tierney is not going to be offered a new contract. That's no surprise at all. I think the team as uh, organization as a whole has been frustrated with Tierney. I don't think Tierney was overly happy there either. So it's best that they each go their separate ways. It's a possible Tyler Ennis isn't back either. Uh, they didn't say they were kind of completely rule out not bringing Ennis back, but he is going to uh, go into a free agency and explore what else is out there. And if there's nothing else that really works or depending on what other deals the Sens do, they will consider maybe bringing him back. But for all intents and purposes, 
Um, he, he's not expected back, but he's been with the Sens a few times, and the crazier things have happened, I guess. Now, uh, when it comes to some other injuries for the playoffs, we found out that the Minnesota Wild will be likely expecting Marcus Foligno and Matt Zuccarello to be available in Game 1. Both were uh, able to practice, and they were even given the exception to leave practice early, and they chose not to, so obviously they were feeling well. So that's a good sign for Minnesota. Uh, the Florida Panthers are hopeful that Aaron Eckblad will be back for Game 1. One, but it's not a guarantee. He has been able to be a full participant in practice, but uh, Andrew Burnett was a little bit, uh, you know, skeptical to say that he'd be, you know, guaranteed to play. But they're hopeful that if he, if even if he doesn't play Game One, he shouldn't be out too much longer than that, which is a good sign. He's a big part of that blue line, and of course, the Panthers are the, you know, a, a real solid team with a real shot, good shot at going deep this year. So they'll need him. To make that happen, uh, we got word from the Penguins that they will be without Tristan Jerry and Jason Zucker to start their series against the New York Rangers. Head coach Mike Sullivan did confirm that they're both considered day to day, but they and they will miss some time, but they should be back during the series. I know I uh, I think the Penguins are going to have a handful here with the Rangers, especially without their top goaltender and uh, obviously Zucker's, you know, not to downplay his injury, but it's a less of a blow than the Jerry injury. I think it's fair to say Zucker's been out a fair bit of time, but certainly gives them more depth when he's in there for sure. Um, so that's not going to be great for them. Um, and, you know, if they have to miss the first few games, that could be a big blow, especially in the case of the goaltender. Uh, in the case of the Maple Leafs, we found out that Michael Bunting will not be in the opening night lineup of Game 1. He's still dealing with an injury and will not be there, but uh, is hopeful to play um, you know, shortly thereafter. Again, he should be available to them throughout you know, some point in Round 1. Uh, Andre Kasher, on the other hand, who has been out dealing with another concussion, has been back and is cleared and is hopeful for game one, he's going to be considered a game time decision. I don't know that the Leafs completely have their third and fourth lines uh, completely settled there either. We'll see where they go uh, from there. But, uh, you know, obviously Kasha will make them a little bit more offensive, especially if Bunting can't go for the few first few games. Having an, another guy like him to put into the top six will be certainly very, very helpful. Now, we also got some other... News today as well on coaching situations. We found out that the Chicago Blackhawks uh, are going to be parting ways with assistant coaches Mark Crawford and Rob Cookson. Uh, there's no word yet on interim head coach Derek King. All the organization does intend to make a decision sometime in a relatively near future. Obviously, it's imperative for a lot of these guys to know as soon as possible if they're not going to be brought back so they have ample opportunity to find other employment. It's only fair to them. But at the same time, the organization has to do enough of a review and make a decision. They want to make sure they, they get it right, of course. Uh, in the case of Chicago, they're definitely going to be going through a deep rebuild according to what we've heard here from GM Kyle Davidson. So they want to make sure they have the right guy in place to do that. Of course, we already saw Detroit announce that Jeff Blaschel uh, and some of his assistants were not going to be back yesterday. So that's a couple of teams here in a couple of days straight that have made some announcements. I won't be surprised in the next couple of days we find out maybe a few more. Uh, out of all the non-playoff teams, like, you know, they generally don't take too long to make those decisions. And as I mentioned, we also got word through Andy Strickland uh, on Twitter. Of course, Andy Strickland is a fairly good plugged-in NHL reporter for Bally Sports in the, in the Midwest here. covers the St. Louis Blues closely. So, of course, uh, Joel Quenville, being a former Blues coach, he likely has some connections that would have some intel on him. And he's been reporting on Twitter here today that Quenville uh, really wants to get back into coaching in the NHL. And there's also a lot of interest. We know there's going to be a, a decent amount of teams looking for a new head coach. Uh, this offseason, that happens pretty much every summer. This is the time of year when you see the most uh, kind of, you know, people kind of getting shuffled around uh, between, you know, May and June is when coaches tend to get fired. Like I said, you usually get a handful from the non-playoff teams, and then as teams get eliminated and early, especially in the first round, typically you see a few more. So, uh, you know, it's that uh, getting to that time of year where there's bound to be lots of openings. So it makes sense if he's going to reemerge that it would be the time to do it. But the problem is, is, because of the situation that he was involved in, uh, even though he was coaching the Florida Panthers at the time, because of the whole Blackhawks situation, the Kyle Beach um, situation there, of course, he ended up um, you know, losing his position in Florida. So he needs to get special permission from Gary Bettman to be reinstated in order to coach behind 
uh, any NHL bench here in the future. So an NHL team cannot just hire him. They need to go through that process. And it hasn't been really all that long. Because, I mean, obviously, it's, it's one of those topics that's kind of hard to say, you know, what happens. He's the first person that was kind of connected to that, that we're hearing about trying to make a comeback. So we'll have to see. I guess where this goes, but in terms of strictly, you know, wins and losses and, uh, you know, uh, getting the job done, so to speak. And from a results standpoint, he's one of the greatest ever, but like I said, being linked to the whole Chicago thing kind of certainly taints the reputation and everything else. So I don't know, but Andy Strickland says there's lots of interest. Time will tell where that is, when that is, and if an opportunity will be given, as I mentioned as well, I also want to take a look at some Montreal Canadian trade rumors, as well as some future of the head coach and Carey Price as well. We had a, obviously more immediate availability here as the season's come to an end. Uh, more news articles in other Montreal Gazette article from Stu Cowan, kind of summarizing all this too, even though I did listen to a fair bit of the interviews, uh, reading his article, kind of shed a little bit of light on a few other situations here. Now, when it comes to Carey Price, we've talked recently as early as yesterday, uh, talking about is he done? Is his career going to be over? Because we had heard that Friday's game could have been his last game. He, we knew that he was seeing the surgeon again regarding his knee and what came from that. Um, we would learned that apparently Carey Price did review some imaging with that doctor. Didn't get a lot of answers. And it's not really like a you know a done deal kind of situation where he met with the doctor, got some answers, and it's done. Like it's basically at this point, it sounds like he's going to be getting a second opinion. And now also they revealed that He's still dealing with a lot of swelling in that knee, which is why uh, he's going back to the doctor and why the second opinion is necessary. It is possible that there might be another surgery required coming up this offseason. I guess they're trying to determine, obviously, if that is going to be required. If so, what kind of recovery is he looking at? And he'll have to decide if he's going to attempt to play next year. He said that, if he's able to play at the level, basically, that he feels he can be effective, then he'd like to play, but no guarantee he's going to do that. He said as his knee stands right now, he wouldn't be able to really be like a full-time starting goaltender and play 55 to 60 games. That's not something that he would be capable of given where his knee is at today. And, of course, you every time you go through surgery, it is harder on your body. It's a bigger recovery, especially multiple surgeries on the same uh, joint or you know part of your body so it, it's tough right um, so we don't really know what the future holds for Kerry Price a lot of question marks at this point we'll have to wait for the second opinion to take place determine if there's going to be another surgery and we probably I'm going to assume won't have full clarity here until a little bit later into the offseason until a lot of that has had time to take place but it based on what they're saying and what Price himself was saying it does sound like it's a possibility that he's done, but it's also a possibility that he could have another surgery and make an attempt at a comeback. Whether or not the comeback would be successful, I don't know. I mean, clearly look at even a case like Tuka Rask in Boston this year, you know, didn't announce the retirement. We didn't hear from him in the offseason that he was done or anything like that. We knew that he was having a big surgery and there were certainly some question marks, but he was trying to come back and then he did make a comeback, played a few games and decided... I can't hack this. So he, he called her quits and retired. You know, will Carey Price end up in a similar boat where he makes an attempt and we'll, won't know until the season starts if it's going to be successful or not? Hard to say. Lots and lots of question marks. So difficult to say on that front. Uh, Ken Hughes also talked again about the Shea Weber contract in that situation. He said that there is a market for that contract to be traded, but it's a little bit complicated given the fact that he's likely to not play again. He's on injured reserve. And uh, he mentioned some things with the league didn't go into really detail, but I would think that where they're you know basically looking to place him on LTIR for the remainder of the contract that maybe they'll need some kind of permission. I don't I don't know where things stand on that, um, but it just made it sound like it was complicated, but obviously it is because of the nature of the injuries and all that. But at the same time, uh, he said that there is a market and they, they would like to try to explore trading that contract if they can. And regardless of Shea Weber is technically on the Habs books or not next season, that they did want to move forward with naming a new captain. So, of course, a lot of speculation that um, you know, and obviously not from these interviews, but just listening to other uh, current and former Montreal Canadian uh, players talk, it sounds like Nick Suzuki 
would be a logical choice. He's signed long term. He's young. He's part of the the you know the new younger core of the team. And even though there's obviously some guys around that are a lot more experienced, they seem to really respect him, how he carries himself on and off the ice and his play and everything like that. So it makes a, a good logical choice. Um, you know, even Brendan Gallagher seems like, based on what he was saying, that he would endorse him the word of the sea. Uh, speaking of Brendan Gallagher, Ken Hughes indicated that as of right now, they have no you know plans to trade him, but. Keep in mind, I would not expect him to come out and say that he did or that he wants to. That's not something you're going to hear. Now, is it possible that Brendan Gallagher doesn't get traded and he stays? Sure it is. He's making a lot of money on a longer-term contract, and he hasn't really performed all that well. So it's going to be tough to trade anyways. I know we had talked about before about the possibility of L.A., uh, with Montreal media, you know, kind of linking him to, uh, you know, former line mate and good friend Phil Deneau, uh, as well as former GM Mark Bergevin, both working for the Los Angeles Kings now, that maybe there's a connection there. But, you know, we don't know that for certain, right? So Kent Hughes says that as of right now, there's no plans to trade Gallagher and hopes he can bounce back next season and, and certainly play better. So that's certainly, uh, you know, I guess we'll have to keep an eye on that situation. Uh, Brendan Gallagher himself was Hopeful that having a longer offseason and time to rest and recover and look after some injuries will help um, with his play here as well. Of course, Jeff Petrie is a big question mark too going into next year. We know that he had requested a trade. Petrie did speak and talk about the fact that some of the comments he had made earlier in the season, he was pretty open about vocal, uh, vocalizing some frustration. And that was a lot to do with the fact that he just wasn't fond of the systems put in place by head coach Dominic Ducharme. He said it was nothing personal against Ducharme, but you could tell that it just the system didn't work for him. And it seemed to be the general sentiment around the locker room that the players were just not happy with how they were being asked to play and how things were being run. And then he was kind of speaking on behalf of the locker room to try to get some points across. Uh, on top of that, you get the fact that the uh, the COVID-19 restrictions in Quebec were pretty strict. Um, and with everything that the league had in place for policies, it was hard on his family, he said. So eventually his wife, Julie, and their children went back to Michigan. And uh, he was on his own for a long stretch. It was really tough, which is why he had asked for a trade and wanted out. Uh, and, of course, management had spoken. Ken Hughes said that he would do his best to accommodate it as long as they could find a trade that worked for them. And it doesn't mean that they won't continue to explore that, to be honest. Where Montreal is at, depending on how deep of a rebuild they want to go through, it might make a lot of sense to move Petrie regardless. But Hughes has said here that they'll continue to look at that and um, you know see where, that's, where it goes. But Petrie's made it known that he's not necessarily ready to shut the door on his time in Montreal and that because of the COVID-19 restrictions between the league and the province of Quebec being loosened, that they find it a little bit easier to deal with and manage right now and that they would be open to staying. So it doesn't necessarily mean he wants out like he did before. So they have to decide, I guess, as a team and as an organization, is there enough interest? Does the deal make sense? Do we proceed with this or not? And is he a part of the solution here for the next few years given the contract? So they have to make some decisions on that. So obviously we got a lot of updates there. Uh, there really wasn't a lot said when it comes to Jonathan Duran, you or Mia, a couple of players that of course, uh, you know, questionable futures. I think it's fair to say. Um, so we didn't really learn a lot in those areas. We did learn that Marty St. Louis definitely wants to return as head coach. And Ken Hughes made it known that on their side, that they're interested in having him back as well, remove the interim tag and getting him signed to a, probably a three-year contract. So that's, um, I would imagine given a relationship between all parties that that's not going to be a difficult deal to negotiate, but they do have to go through that process and they get the deal negotiated and signed before it's official. But at this point, it sounds like it's pretty much a slam dunk that Marty St. Louis will indeed be the full-time head coach of the Montreal Canadiens on an extended contract starting in the fall. Um, so we know that here as well. Um, obviously, I know other players like uh, Romanov had mentioned that he was uh, obviously, you know, loves Montreal and wants to be able to sign for a long-term deal too when his uh, time comes here. So that's certainly encouraging. You know, Caulfield, Suzuki seem to be quite happy. Um, and they have to decide who's going to go and who's going to stay. But that's your your big pieces of the Habs that have been talked about a lot between obviously Price and Petrie and the Weber contract and Gallagher, uh, you know, et cetera, the, the coaching situation. We got a lot of news on their front today. So certainly some lots of questions still, but we got a little bit more clarity on where they might be going 
for at least part of the team. So let me know your thoughts on what we're going to see with those aspects of the Montreal Canadiens down in the comments, as well as the other items that we talked about here today. Do you see Joe Quenville returning to the NHL? Will Gary Bettman allow that to happen? Let me know down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>